that term up? Never mind. I don't want to start that room up. I know she had I went up to see her, but. You're on now. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, April 26th <coughs> meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And I will ask uh, Mr. McMahon to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> Take a few moments just to introduce everyone at the table. and. Let's start on my left over here with Mr. Preston. Identify your, who you are and what. Uh, Bob place. Preston, Chamber of Commerce Rep. Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, Dean Merrill, a member at large. Nancy Stiles, uh, representing the town of Hampton and also chair. Rick Griffin, uh, representing the town of Hampton, selectman. Bob Ladd, representing the Village District. Uh, Fran McMahon representing the uh, Rockingham Planning Commission. Ann Carnaby, uh, meeting assistant. Uh, meeting Jason Bashan, town planner. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And with us this evening, we have <coughs> uh, actually William uh, Rose from DOT and Paul Clary from the HB, right? Yeah, Pete. Pete. Pardon me? Pete. 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 Um, they'll be doing a presentation for us, and we have a couple of guests in the audience. So welcome this evening. Uh, if you want to identify yourself, fine. If you don't, that's okay, too. Uh, Lynn Morrison, resident of Oak Boulevard. Good. Oh, okay. Welcome. Um, public comment. Uh, if you would like to say something, come on up to the mic over here. Identify yourself and your residence. And I wrote out what I had to say, so oh, I have okay. copies for you, okay, so I wouldn't you. forget anything. <laughs> uh, so, good evening. Good evening. Um, as I said, my name is Lynn Larson. I'm a year-round resident at Ocean Boulevard. I live at 553 Ocean Boulevard. I've been here previously to, about the issues I'm going to cover, but I'm here to express my very deep disappointment that the area north of Ocean uh, on Ocean Boulevard north of Boar's Head has been removed, to my understanding, from the road improvement plan. The roads and sidewalks in the area north of Boar's Head are deplorable, causing destruction to the property of the residents and a serious safety concern to visitors and residents alike. The failed drainage system of these roads has caused an enormous and illegal burden of dirt and mud-laden rain off runoff to the marsh, complicating matters the feud between the town of Hampton and the state over maintaining the road and sidewalk in this area is a disgrace and it hurts taxpayers and area visitors alike. I'd like to start with the drainage, although I know the aim of the road improvement plan is not primarily drainage. One cannot separate drainage from safety and maintenance issues in this instance. The drains are built into the road system and years and years of band-aid maintenance of sidewalks and roads have created a drainage crisis. I'm a six-year resident of Ocean Boulevard, but I recently built a new home at 553. To obtain the required permissions from the town and state, I spent thousands of dollars in engineering and special permits to satisfy conservation concerns of both the town and the state. My permit requires special drains to control runoff from my roof and even from the small roof of a shed in my side yard. I am not allowed to use fertilizers, required to plant native vegetation, and to further protect the marshland, supervised by a wetland scientist. My front walkway and turnaround area are required to be permeable pavers, which is a considerable expense and I'm required to maintain all the drains and permeable pavement by regular vacuuming. I understand and I support the need to protect our natural resources, but it's extremely upsetting to see that neither the state of New Hampshire nor the town of Hampton is held to the same standards as I am as a private citizen. While both of these entities exercise care to make sure 
that I, as a new home builder, protect our common environment, neither seems to care about the damage that's occurring on a much greater scale due to poor road, sidewalk, and drain conditions that shunt tons and tons of mud, water, rocks, and debris onto private property and into the marshlands. This past winter, I lost at least a foot of soil from areas of my yard due to unchecked flooding from the street. I have deep gouges running on both sides of my property from the rivers that came from the roadway and through my yard. My topsoil went directly into the marsh along with many more tons of soil, rock, and sand washed in by flooding from the street. Sidewalks in this area are in deplorable condition and in some areas literally impassable due to the long dispute between Hampton and the state over who should maintain the street and sidewalks in this area of Ocean Boulevard, no one assumes the responsibility. It is my understanding that Hampton Town has agreed with state to take over care of roads and sidewalks in this area once the state repairs the roads and sidewalks. However, if this area is bypassed in the improvement plan, this will never happen. Tons and tons of broken pavement and rocks thrown onto the boulevard during this winter storms were deposited on sidewalks and yards along Ocean Boulevard. This winter was extreme, to be sure, but flying rocks are a way of life on Boar's Head. During these storms, plows were running up and down Ocean Boulevard, shoving the rocks, sand, soil, huge sections of pavement. I have a section of pavement this big that shoved up on my sidewalk, off the streets and into my side yard, my sidewalk and yard, worsening the impact on my home and the marshland. Along with other residents, I shoveled up much of the debris in front of my house to facilitate removal. But DOT trucks that have come to clean up the parking spaces simply drive around the piles. Although these rocks and broken pavement did not originate from our property, Apparently, they are now ours to deal with. If it were not for the many people who have stopped with their pickup trucks to pick up ro rocks for their yards, the piles would be much larger. I have photos of some of the piles of pavement that remain. As you know, Ocean Boulevard is a very popular area for jogging, walking, and bike riding, especially during summer events. However, it is literally not possible to walk on many Ocean Boulevard sidewalks due to the large rock piles, forcing pedestrians into the roadway along with excessively high-speed traffic. Riding bicycles along this area is particularly hazardous. Both residents and visitors take their lives in their hands due to speeding drivers, lack of a bike lane, and in some places, lack of even a median strip. Currently, this is further complicated by the piles of rock and debris that force riders even further into traffic lanes. As one of the residents who uses a bicycle to avoid driving downtown during the busy summer, I was relieved and pleased to hear that a bike lane was being included in the prior road plan and disappointed to learn that it no longer is. The two traffic lanes in each direction north of Boar's Head are the site of daily drag races. Many mornings there are newly laid black strips of rubber on the northbound roadway in front of my house. Drivers routinely speed along the boulevard, making it hazardous to cross Ocean Boulevard to reach the beach. If one does make it across, the impossibly high curbs in a large section between Boar's Head and Winnicunit means residents and visitors are unable to step up onto the sidewalk, requiring traveling in the street along the ocean side directly beside speeding traffic until reaching an area low enough to get up onto the sidewalk. Granite steps built many years ago to allow access in one of these areas are so deteriorated that use of them is more hazardous than walking in the roadway. I believe the transportation study found that there was no need for two extra lanes in this area and their removal would slow traffic to a much safer level. These issues deserve and need to be addressed. In particular, the intersection of Winniconnet and Ocean Boulevard is very dangerous, especially during the summer, when unfamiliar drivers routinely make their turns in the wrong direction. This has resulted in a long history of serious accidents. 
This also needs and deserves correction. Looking at the road improvement plan south of Boar's Head, it seems to me a lot of money is being spent to add more parking spaces and to beautify the main beach area to boost tourism revenue and revenue for local businesses. However, north of Boar's Head, we are taxpayers that contribute substantially to the revenue of the town and have serious long neglected issues to road and sidewalk conditions. We deserve and request that you find a way to address our concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lynn. Thank you for coming this evening and sharing that all with us. Um, I'm sorry you weren't home when I went out door knocking the other day. Uh, you were probably out for a morning walk when I went by. <clears throat> I do want to share with you, though, that um, this is a, a transportation grant that looks at the flow of traffic, parking, and sidewalks, and pedestrian safety. And <clears throat> originally, there was a concept drafted for above Boar's Head, from Boar's Head up to Winnicott Winnic Road. And that will be continued to be investigated in October, I think it is, when they do the engineering for the uh, reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard. That peat pot will be looked at, and so won't the drainage to be looked at at that time. So I want to assure you that that, that will be happening. It's just not in this piece of, of it's not in this grant. It will be in the uh, engineering piece that comes forward um, in the fall. And with people here on the, the uh, commission, I'm sure that we will stay on top of what's going on and be in touch with DOT uh, as, that, as that progresses. But I will also share with you that, and the, my commissioners don't know this yet, but come September, uh, we'll be uh, looking at the other part of the uh, master plan, which addresses uh, flooding, environment, drainage, and all of that. So I look forward to having more conversations with you about that at that time. Great. Okay. I'll, I'll just let you know, Katie, okay, because you weren't here when um, John was the chairman. She has been at all meetings from the very beginning. Okay. Well, I'm glad she came tonight and shared mm -hmm. all of this with us tonight. Anyone else? Public comments? No? Okay. Um, appointments. William Rose and Pete. Yep. <laughs> what did I call you before? Paul. Oh. Oh. <laughs> in the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. yeah, with the pigs. <laughs> Call me Peter. I know I'm in trouble because that's what my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my understanding is that um, you're going to share with us tonight basically what you're not in detail what you're going to pre present, but the overview overview of your presentation on May 10th. Yep. Is that uh, correct? Well, I wanted to do a couple of things. Okay. <clears throat> First, I guess I just want to correct the record. The the uh, portion of Ocean Boulevard from Forest Head to Winnicott Road is going to be included in the plan. Where the this plan? Is, is going to be. The, the concepts, we looked at two. One was a roundabout. One was uh, looking at signal installation. Right. There were concerns with the roundabout option because we were looking at potentially closing off. Is it King Street that's King's out highway. there? King's, King's, King's Highway. King's Highway. Highway. I just didn't think you'd gone to enough detail to. We make didn't it. go into any more detail than the concept level because we didn't have the funding available to do that. But the plan will still will still show and still discuss what we looked at uh, with the additional task order under this project. So it has okay. not been left out of the plan. I think that'll make some of the people that are coming to the public hearing happy to at least understand what the first concept is. Anyway. So that's that part. Uh, the second part is I wanted to talk a little bit more about what is it that you would like to have happen following this meeting. What the public meeting that we're having is intended to. My understanding, as you know, I'm new in this seat too. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> my understanding is that what we want want to do is to let the public know how far we have come through the uh, transportation grant, where it started, how many. Um, hills and rivers that you've jumped, uh, jumped across and what the decision is going forward to present that recommendation. It's not finalized. I, I understand that. Okay. It's not a final concept. It's, it's a recommendation going forward to the Department of Transportation when they do the, uh, the reconstruction piece. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, the one thing I guess I want to say is that th this is going to ultimately become part of this group's master plan. Correct. And so uh, where, where my interest is in this point is looking to how we're going to transition from 
acid forming this group to this group starting to move in the direction of adoption acceptance? Well, I think we really need to hear from the people uh, as well. And so after your presentation on the 10th, I'm guessing that when we meet on May 20, six, one of those, 26 maybe. End of May. Sorry. The end of May uh, is that we will finalize everything that's going to go into the master plan. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not anticipating that there will be a lot of uh, changes. Uh, I know when I was out door knocking, I had several conversations and several people seem to be very supportive of some of the concepts that have come forward. So uh, I, I, don't, I won't say that for everybody because I didn't, not, ev not everybody was home. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I just think we need to hear from the people. And so what I would like you to do, and I guess I'd like the commissioners to chime in and fill me in as well because you've been through the whole process, is just to give a history of the beginning and what we, why we stopped doing different pieces, why we stopped doing Ashworth Avenue, um, just the different pieces and the public hearings that have been held in the past that made those, some of those changes, uh, and then present what, the, what we think the final product maybe okay and then I, I guess just the one more point I want to make and I've made this at a couple of previous meetings but we're at a place now I, I don't want to set the expectation out that this is another round of additional Change. comments and that there's going to be additional concepts that come about following this meeting right Pete's Pete's more polite than I am but we're the contract is out of money to address additional concepts at this point and what we have left in the contract is what we need for VHB to finish the project that we brought them on board, which is to develop the transportation section to the to the. Well, I think those master. I think those concepts have been changed based on previous public hearings. They have, have, yes. So that's what I said. I'm not anticipating any huge changes. If you if you offer someone an option of doing A or B, they may decide on A or B. But as long as it's A or B and not A or B or C. It's the C that we have a hard time with. Just, I just wanted, so from according to our last meeting, we have a couple of options is where we're at. So that's what we're going to talk about, and then we'll make the decision the end of May. Is that, am, am I correct that that's where we're at? Well, I think there's an opportunity to discuss this a little bit, but my understanding is that we've settled on what we believe the final I, uh, concepts are. Uh, if we want to lay out to the public what the other considerations were that led up to that, that's great. Okay. Um, but we're we're getting a little squirrely around the these are the alternatives, and that's where I'm. Well, I, I thought last meeting we had a lot of A and Bs, and now we were. Such as, the, uh, if you use an example, um, the, well, let's just take the South Beach. Um, you know, you showed us a roundabout, and you showed us a, a um, signal. Signal. You know. It was kind of like here's an A and here's a B. Yeah. Right? You know, I think, and you know, pretty much from from the South Beach heading north. You know, once you got into the straight, you know, the the the, um, the lettered streets, there wasn't a lot of room, and that just kind of worked its way up until. Sure. And, and just to follow on to that example, it's a great <coughs> example. Uh, we were looking to put both of those options in the plan. Both options will work. Both options are something that the plan can recommend. I, we're, I'm not. I'm not pushing you to box you in to say <coughs> signal a roundabout. Tonight pick we're going to vote on A. Yeah. yeah. No. 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 But we're, <coughs> where we're at now, I guess, is what I'm trying to say is what we're going to present on the 10th is what we believe we've heard from the area commission is what you're comfortable with putting in the plan at this point. But we, we may hear from the people that night that they like that the majority of people sure. that are there Absolutely. like Agreed. Plan A. So if the majority of the people who live there like plan a there why are ones that are left out why wouldn't we go with plan a so that's and i'd like to comment too i think the point of this uh i'm all for everything being done that we can do to make this all happen but i of a, i'm of the feeling that if we're going to start leaving things out like we've left out many many numerous things including it doesn't all start down at uh, north of ocean boulevard it started on ashworth avenue 
if we're going to leave stuff out, let's leave it out and do a finished plan. If, in, in case you're not aware of it, this is a master plan study. The master plan actually that this group is in charge of goes all the way to High Street. It doesn't stop at, at where this plan is being worked at. This is a master plan transportation grant for Route 1A. That goes all the way. Our master plan that we've worked on for years goes to High Street. It doesn't stop. This is about Hampton Beach traffic flow. Uh, I think that you're going to be overwhelmed when you see how many people are going to show up. I hear that these cards have been in the mail. I hear a lot of people are seeing them. They were and never people, in the mail. I well, then you must them. have hand delivered them because I've been. I had three people today that came and asked me about them. <laughs> so there are people that are coming. And you know, it does say traffic and pedestrian safety issues, parking areas of Hampton Beach, tra Hampton Beach traffic flow. This is all the way. I say forget about doing some of the things you want to do and do a, uh, a uh, more of a substantial plan. And this part I just would like to throw out there. The other night at the planning board in Hampton, um, there were some issues that came up, and Ann Carnaby here that takes the minutes, she said, well, because she's a planning board member, she mentioned that, um, you know, well, maybe this problem will be helped along when we have this study that's going on. And I will tell you, for the last two years, all along this whole area, including all the way down to the bridge, things that people have talked about, well, what will happen when they do the road over? And people have begun to think of that. And I'm not condemning anyone for these quotes that I'm going to mention, but it was stated there by Fran, and I'm all for Fran, and I agree with him 100% that this is true. Just, just say, say the okay. comment. You the don't comment need to, is, you don't need to assign it. No, well, no, these, these are quotes from, this, this one's from Fran. He said, uh, when Ann mentioned that she would like you know, that maybe these things could help. He said, uh, this, it, it's going to be a long time, many, many years before this ever happens. This is not going to happen in our lifetime. Where one of the other, uh, it's a direct quote, where one of the other planning member people said, not only is it not going to, and this was Keith Lassard, not going to happen in our lifetime, it's not going to happen in our kids' lifetime. Um, where Tracy Emmerich stated... Let's not keep assigning these. Well, no, no, no. These are, these, are the pl these are the people that are on the planning board that are elected by the people. And I have to remind you that the Board of Hampton voted, the Board of Selectmen voted 5-0 to zero to uh, do something in this area, quickly left out. The, the precinct unanimously voted to, to consider this. It was left out. Um, the biggest part of this, what was done here by your group, was done on 82 people from Facebook, and yet you're going to see a lot of people from Hampton that are going to be here on May 10th, Good. and we need to listen to them. And I think Nancy Stiles has done a wonderful job. I feel like everything's changed. I feel that the planning board really realizes what's happening here. Nothing. And I, you can yes and you can say all the things you want, William Rose, but I think you've left us disappointed, and I'm very disappointed in everything you've done. So I would just like to put it there. Thank and you. I've got a lot more to say on the May 10th. Okay. And yet I want to see everything happen for all of you guys. Just remember that. In, uh, everywhere. I want to see it all happen. Just what I want to not see is what's not going to happen. Okay. I just want to remind you that May 10th is a public hearing. Yeah. So I want trust you to me, get, they're going to be there. I want you to get all of your questions answered here. Oh, trust tonight. me. I've got plenty tonight. more. Uh, Fran? Just as a, a clarification, I, I am totally supportive of the, the work we saw at our last meeting. What, so I was I. what I was referring to was the piece from Winnicott at the High Street. In my opinion, I think that's going to occur at a later period, you know, when that... And, and, not in our lifetime. Uh, well, not in our children's I'm lifetime. Old, much older than you, so uh, uh, my yeah, lifetime is really short. But anyhow, that, I'm, I'm very supportive of the plan and the process we've gone through. I think so am I. We're, we're well positioned now to go to the public and, and be able to, to do the improvements that I think we all wanted to see. Uh, you know, the heart of the boulevard, uh, the issues with the sidewalks, the issues with the drainage. 
Uh, and unfortunately, you know, we we deal with you know financial issues that you know you know very well uh, uh, how you got have to go through the long long process of getting in the ten year plan and then rising to the top in the ten year plan and and that's what I was talking about. As of today, we're still in it for the eight million. <laughs> I checked that out today. <laughs> Is the North of Ocean Boulevard in the 10 year plan? The scope of the project is not identified in the 10 year plan. Because I met with Chris Sununu when he was the, uh, a, uh, uh, what was executive it that he did council. before? Executive, executive council. Executive council. Twice I met with him along with John Nyan. Maybe it was even three times. And he was very, very, very positive that we were going to be in the 10 year plan. Now he's governor. We're not in the 10 year yes, plan. Yes, we are. We are. Oh, we are in it. All the way. We, right to where? Currently, there's, there's uh, 280, is it 280,000 that's in there for engineering? The, for the 2019 to 2028 10 year plan, which is the one that's currently, uh, I think the Senate was going to vote on it yesterday, or maybe it's been delayed, I don't know, but the current 10 year plan is, has an entire project from an engineering through right of way to construction in the, in the plan. So it's there. It's there. We will keep on top of it. Keep the faith. Well, is I've it been faithful for 14 years, and that is easy and fast. <laughs> is there anything uh, specifically that you would like to make sure that they elaborate on at the at the public hearing? No, I, I think uh, you know the public hearing is for that purpose. And again, the material we saw at our last meeting was was very uh, illustrative and and very uh, uh, telling. Uh, but I but I think uh, he. I, I, don't, I guess we're questioning too is how is this going to be presented? I mean, we watched it on an overhead, um, you know, with a, com a computer and, and zooming some stuff in. And I mean, to us that that was more informative because you know you could drill down to, to streets as opposed to if we're looking at some maps that aren't that big. You got you know I, I just wanted to make sure how this is going to be presented too. You know, if we're just going to put some maps on a table, I ain't doing anything. Nope. Nope, that's not what we're intending to do. Another PowerPoint. Uh, the other thing we talked about at the last meeting was making roll sets available so that right. folks Right, so if someone can go over and take a closer look. And that is still the plan. Yeah, good. Okay. So you'll just have to check to find out the equipment that they're going to need. Right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the facility, I'm sorry, just yep, the ahead. facility that this is being hosted at has a projector in place or we need to bring one along does it have a screen or should we plan on bringing one I it's it's at Marston school so I would assume that these things are but Bill, I'll check into it and I'll get back to you we'll uh, plan on a belt and suspenders approach and bring our own as well <laughs> okay but I'll, I'll check with the superintendent and, and Keith Lassard the, the, uh, yeah either, the, either Keith or Lois yeah. one or two we'll be able to give it yeah up. I'll get an overview of the, and then the you'll scene. call them back yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Mr. do you have any questions or things that you'd like to see presented? Uh, Patton? I'd like some more clarity on the piece from Boar's Head to Winnicunit. It seems the first piece from the bridge to Boar's Head is pretty much in place. At this meeting, the second piece, at least in my mind, is nowhere near in place and could become quite confusing to people at that meeting. Is there something you can do to clarify the second piece from Boards Head to Winnicott? Yeah, we have from back when we had the conversation over a year now ago about that portion of the project, we have that, those same concepts that we can bring forward and show folks what it is that we discussed and which option we believe that we heard from the Area Commission is what was supported, which was the signalized option at Winnicott. And then what we talked about, and it was a pretty extensive conversation about what's going on with the lanes and the sidewalks and, and parking and, and all the rest. What about the funding issue for that piece? Which funding issue? Uh, the plan costs to go from Boar's Head to... Sure. It, so um, there is nothing we can do about the funding situation for this effort to address that in more detail. We only have the dollars that the Hampton Beach Area Commission successfully attained through the TCSP grant to fund this project. There is no more money. And the contract that we executed in order to provide maximum flexibility 
and not have a strict scope right out of the gates, but in order to address the items that came up as they came up with the commission, the contract vehicle does not allow us to add either time or money to the contract. But can, you, can you assure us that <clears throat> even the concept will be moved forward to um, the engineering that's going to be done? Uh, whatever is ultimately identified for the project scope on Ocean Boulevard, w whatever that scope is, will have extensive engineering design, right-of-way research and acquisition if necessary, and whatever is required for construction. And that will all come after October, right, starting in October? Uh, what is available starting in October would be the engineering design money first. That's a 280000 and change that you had mentioned. Correct. Uh, but the total project as identified in the 10-year plan now is right around $8.5 million. Correct. And when does, uh, is construction? 2024? Uh, it's somewhere between 2022 and 2024. Okay. So the engineering, after this happens, then we're going to hear reports back on the engineering for the whole strip. Is that correct? <clears throat> From uh, High Street to the bridge. Is that where the engineering is going to take place? Mm -hmm. There will be another project that starts, and I just had a conversation with the project manager for that project today, wondering when this is going to be done so they could get their hands on it to see what was going forward in terms of two. where they were focusing engineering design. Okay, so that's phase two. Could call it phase two. Or that's and who's who's we could call it phase two, but they're actually totally separate projects. This is and, a completely separate effort from the Who's the project manager? Back. Jennifer Rizik. One of the basic questions I have is, you know, and because th things, these things go along as it goes along, and there was a time when the big conversation was about the town, um, and I'll tell you, I was voted out of office that one year because I was accused of going along with the state and getting the town to agree to take care of the sidewalks that the state needed to, to be taken care of, which the town has gone um, and agreed to maintain these sidewalks. And that's fine, and, I, and the town still wants to uh, maintain these sidewalks and do what's their share once that they've been repaired. But how can they do the sidewalks? And like, uh, there are many people like um, Lynn out there that's properties are just floating away. Yesterday was a very good example. There were torrents of water running off Ocean Boulevard. There are torrents of water today at uh, up near High Street, which I don't even use, like to even get involved in High Street because I think that we should focus to Winnicott Road first. But uh, they have the same type of issue now there. There's a lake there now. Oh, yeah. It's there all the time. It's always been there. It's there and, uh, yeah. you know, so, but, you know, the town, how are they going to maintain the sidewalks when the, if down there, what about the other sidewalks? And the sidewalks are deplorable. Why can't something at least be done for those sidewalks? This is the area where people walk. This is the area where people come from Hampton. And, uh, and I find it hard to believe that this has been left out of uh, and not considered to be one of the high traffic flow areas because I live on it and I know that it is a high traffic flow area and that's the only one that they're going to be leaving four lanes of traffic they're going to make them three lanes and two lanes down at the other end when actually uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be questioning that I have many of the things that people are questioning I'm actually for and I tried to be for almost everything that we're for here at this um, uh, area you know the Hampton Area Commission I'm for everybody I'm just not for what's not happening here and I will ta tell you that not only is the town prepared to um, <clears throat> take over these sidewalks they if that road is ever replaced and dealt with in this area they're more than willing to accept the road and take care of it for the next 50 or 80 years so it doesn't happen again what's happened to it now which is absolutely nothing. I have lived there since 1963 and nothing has been done in this area since 1963. And the town is willing to, I don't know if Fred said an urban compact road or whatever or what, you know. I don't think you want to go that Well, much. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just telling you that what Fred said, the town is willing to accept this road once it's corrected. Okay. Let's go on with the questions. Mr. Preston, any suggestions, questions or about the presentation that you have? No, I, I appreciate um, all your efforts up to this point. And I know sometimes when we, we don't, when we meet eight times a year, sometimes it's hard to remember everything. Unfortunately, the last meeting I wasn't here, I had a meeting in Manchester. But I'm still excited about 
the continued transformation of Hampton Beach. If we had more money, and, and that gets everything going, we could turn that corner and keep going. And I think that we will continue to try that. I mean, we do have a governor that wants to work with us down here. We're fortunate to have a guy like Bill Watson on our commission that can really tell us exactly what we can and, and can't expect sometimes. So I, I think what's happening is good. Now, as far as the problems at your house and, and your home, Not your home my, is beautiful, by the way. I drive by it, I see it all lit up, and I see it, it's gorgeous. I, I, I love that. And I think we'll see more of that in time because of a lot of these improvements that William is helping us to plan. You know, we're just going to have to work to get more money. This, this isn't going to happen for five or six years, maybe. And then we might have to work to get more money that could be six and seven and eight years. But we'll get there. It just takes time. And if you go to Concord, well, you know it better than all of us. Everybody's fighting for the same dollar. I think we're, we're extremely lucky to get what we've gotten. And once they see the changes that are down here, <clears throat> I think they're going to be in a bind to say, well, we've got to fix the next part. So let's just keep going as best as, as we can. Mr. Rage, any questions or? I hate following Bob. Um, <laughs> it's good. It's good. The, um, I think we're in the right direction. I think there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, we can only do so much with the money that we have. Um, question about that meeting that's coming. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I hope the presentation goes first. It will. So most everything will be explained to people, and then, then they can ask questions about it after, because I don't want people coming with, with guns loaded thinking that um, you're just going right at everybody. I, I'd like to have it all explained to them, and then we can, we can answer questions, you can answer questions. So I'm looking forward to I'm going to let him turnout. answer all the questions about, about the um, project itself, because they've drafted it. They're the experts. Yeah. You know, they've yeah. drafted it. And, so. and I, I agree that we need a lot of work done. We need a lot of work done in this whole town. So um, we just have to figure a way to get the money and to move forward. So this is a start. Mr. Merrill. I, I, I mean, I, your comments, too. And, 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 and I, Bill, I appreciate you and Pete coming down and, and just kind of having a pre-meeting, you know, rather than, you know, emails don't, don't, do, don't do well because you sometimes what, person thinks is something entirely different so I appreciate you guys coming down tonight um, I, I think if we if we do the presentation like we saw it uh, uh, last month it, that it will just you know will show all the work that's been put into it and uh, and then and then try to work towards that that second goal like you know to the extent of the sidewalks brick I don't know if they I mean this is out of our hands per se but no I'm just saying a, t a fix today, you know, is, is there an opportunity for the, you know, be it the town manager or, uh, and DOT to get together to, to talk about fix, you know, the sidewalk in front of the lens or your place? It's or not the today. It's 14 years this has been talked about. Yeah, but we're talking about today. But I'm just trying to say, forward. is, there, forward, is, is, there, forward. is there a way to get something <laughs> outside of that, this meeting, to, to try to look at those things? I, I don't know, you know, because they are down there. You know, uh, the Northampton Beach is pretty beat up and, and that type of stuff. So the trucks are down there doing the stuff. If, you know, can they work their way to fix some short things on the other end? This, it's just, this has nothing to do with us, per se, but... I know them all from watching them. They come and try to fix things all the time, but they can't because it's impossible. They've even made efforts to try to go through the ladies' yard. The lady was willing to let them do it, but then all of a sudden, after it was decided, somebody pulled them away from it, you know, to sort of get rid of the water that's ruining her yard. It's not my yard, by the way, not mine at all. Uh, I've, I understand the, the problems I have with my property, but we're talking about the water, just like Lynn talked about the water that's washing her whole yard away. That's what's happening, not just to those, there are many people all along. Uh, it happened, and we got mentioned about uh, where Lupo's is, about how, you know, they're just, it just goes on and on. But, you know, these sidewalks have been talked about for years, and, 
you know, this is the reason I ran for selectman 14 years ago, and I'm not one bit closer to seeing anything happen. And I've been yes to death. I've gone to every single meeting long before Nancy ran for uh, for senator, long before John Nyhan. I appointed John Nyhan with the board of selectmen to this board, and uh, I've been to all these meetings with Fred, and with one people that work that William works for long ago. I can't even remember the one, the one that went around the truck with the beach years ago. Uh, the white-haired guy uh, that's long gone. All of these people, I've seen so many people come and go from DOT and DREAD and all of that. They've yes you to death, but nothing has happened. And it's not really what's in this plan, it's what's left out of this plan. Okay, well, what do you think is left out? Well, um, first of all, if you really want to know what I think is left out, uh, and one of the things that, when I think about this whole thing, which again, I am very much in favor of everything that everyone here wants. I can't tell you that enough. I'm in favor of it. I'm not against anything. Um, but uh, William was the first one to say that we wasted too much time on Ashworth Avenue. And the group that this gentleman over here works for, if you, anyone wants to turn around and watch all these meetings that we came to, and Man Nancy, I don't know if you've done it, but you could, should maybe do it. Um, you will see how many things they recommended. Less things that they recommended are being done. Uh, there are fewer, there are more things being done that they did not recommend. And no people recommended them either. But, you know, so people just didn't want certain things to happen. And even though they were recommended by the company that he works for, that we paid a huge amount of money, they were just gone. And uh, so it's not what is in this plan, it's been what's been left out of this plan. And I think a lot of people know that, and there's a lot of people that are very unhappy. Well, tell but, me what's left out that you... Well, first of all, north of Ocean Boulevard is left out of it. You can tell me all you want. I say, let's get substantial plans and have them finish and leave something out that they've got down at the other end that they're planning on doing. Don't do it. Let's have a substantial plan that we can work on and that the town can work together. The town wants to do something. They want to make this good. You know, it's awful. Uh, all of the people, and DOT, who usually does a wonderful job, and they do a wonderful job with me. I'll tell you this little story about a person that lives on the corner of um, uh, Church Street and Ocean Boulevard. The wife calls me up. My husband's 75 years old, and he's been um, sh uh, pushing the sand out into the road and can't bring in the rocks. And he's expecting them, you know, that when they come and sweep it out, they're going to sweep it all away. Instead, DOT stops and tells them. Now, this isn't the way they used to be. They said, you know, if you keep doing that, we're going to go to the police. The next thing you know, there's two police cars outside their house. You've dealt with this girl, lady. Her name is Brenda. Uh, and um, uh, and the, cop, the police cars sit across the street. And this poor old guy uh, feels that the police are there for him. And I say to him, you know, I said, stop worrying about that. Those guys are probably just sitting there anyway. They're probably not there for you. Or are they? You know, that's how people feel about it now. And Hampton has one of the oldest population, it is the oldest population in the state. And all along here, these are all, I can tell you the names of all of the people. They live in the condominiums. They live at the places next to the lighthouse, all those little cottage condominiums. People have been, people well into their 70s have been carrying the rocks across the street and putting them into the parking area. You know, people shouldn't have to do this. Uh, the town, and I will tell you, I'm as, as upset with the town because every one of these complaints, I've brought them to the town. I've never called DOT. Uh, but I do know that I have watched all these people picking them up. There are, some, there are uh, stone walls showing up everywhere. In fact, there's one right across the street. Someone's built a whole wall from the stones. And there was a time when DOT wouldn't let you pick those stones. It was against the law. You're supposed to put them over on the, um, uh, into the beach. Now, they don't, no one cares. They certainly don't want to pick them up. DOT, everybody really is on DOT now because they've been treated so shabbily. A lot of people realize that um, a lot has gone on there at Northampton and this and that, but people are very unhappy with the way that they've been treated this winter. And, they, and I, can't, I always try to say to people, you know, there might be one more storm. Give it another couple of weeks. But 
they have done nothing. All the rocks are gone now, but people, mainly contractors, have picked them up. And some old people, the old people feel disappointed. They feel like they pay their taxes and nothing's happening. So there's a lot of stuff that just isn't happening. A lot of stuff has been left out of this plan, too numerous to mention. Okay. I want to remind you, if you have any questions about the plan, direct the questions tonight because we're not oh, going I already to know what. I understand it only too well. I think it's a terrible plan. I'm glad to see something's happening somewhere, but I think what's been left out of here, I'm very disappointed. And I, I think that uh, I've watched the whole thing. I don't know what the guy's name that was here. That He was a wonderful man, and he did a wonderful job. And he was just, I felt bad for him that he had to listen and just be uh, not one thing that he asked and recommended pretty much it all just psh, gone. So, uh, and that's all I'd, about Ashworth Avenue and everything else. I'd, and William, you're the one that said, and it just rings in my ear when I'm trying to sleep at night, we wasted too much time on Ashworth Avenue. And I, he said, well, it would be $28,000. And then there was another time you told me, well, yeah, I found that $28,000. But then all of a sudden, psh, gone again. Uh, I, okay. I, I have to say I don't have any recollection of the well, quotes I that you're attributing to me. Okay. Let, let me speak. Let me speak. Uh, I, I have no recollection of, of the quotes you're attributing to me. But what I will say is, uh, one, I want to make sure that the record is accurate in stating that the scope of work that DHP has been working under has been approved by the Hampton Beach Area Commission at every step of the way. So this I will is tell you, I voted for it too because I tried to do the right thing, but only to get turned around and get knocked back later, at the last minute by you. It, by me? Yes. Oh yeah, we've taken this part of the plan out. And you can say all you want, it's still in there. T I'll believe that when I see it. I've yeah, it's You're you, gonna have William. what's that? It's you. Okay, let's not. Well, I'm, let's I'd be happy the to. the one that's done it to me. I'd, I'd be happy to respond, but I, you're not giving me anything to respond to. Please. Well, I, you know what? You say those quotes. I bet you it is on tape. I'll have to go back and watch all those meetings to find it. You told me that uh, too much time was spent on Ashworth Avenue. But so are you are you saying that your belief is that the Department of Transportation has removed the Ashworth Avenue I detailed concept designs from this plan? Well, uh, I don't think that a lot of things weren't considered, and now there's evidently no money to left. If this is what you told me to do anything down north of Ocean Boulevard, I was very clear of how the town felt about it, and the town was very clear. This board actually was very clear because I believe we had a motion here at the Hampton Area Commission to support to oh, to a Road. And now Fred and is the one that did brought that it work. up to Rick, go all the way to Rick, High Street. Please let me speak. We did that work. That that work that you're talking about was done. We executed a new task order and engaged the services of VHB to do exactly the work that you're talking about. And that work will appear in the in the master plan. With the work that's not happening is the more detailed design work. So Ashworth, that's what I'm talking about. Ashworth hasn't been left out. Ashworth is in the same situation as when it is up to Winnicott Road. Yeah, not much is happening there either. Okay, um, Mr. But Preston, you have questions? I do. I think we're getting into some things here that we we really shouldn't be. Um, it's not part of this particular discussion, as I see it. Well, if it helps, I would prefer to do this now than have it happen on the 10th, I okay. guess. Okay, all right. Because I, I look at where we're facilitators. We, we try to help to make everything work and try to coordinate things with Concord and, and state parks and DOT. And that's, that's our job. Now, to, to mention a couple minutes ago that we ought to just blow up the plan we have and we're this far down the road, I think is is completely unreasonable. It's a waste of an awful lot of time. We're ready to go. We I have the money. That about Hold blowing on. up the plan. Hold on. Never did I say Hold that. On. So don't right. put that word in my mouth. Maybe I won't, I won't use that word then, but you did say something. Well, we should change it. Change it, yeah. Leave something out like you left other things out and do something more constructive. That's exactly what I'm that, saying. And, and I think that this body says that we're going to continue to look for more money to, to make that turn at Boar's Head and keep going north. I don't know that you can take out, you know, what all the work that they've got going from the bridge to the boulevard to changing parking lots and roads and lanes and drains and 
all that money. There just isn't enough money to keep going. I think we should continue to go look for some. I think there are people on this board that can, can go help find that money. And I think that we'll have other people from Concord that will want to help us do it. But I, I don't want to send the wrong signal out to people that, that this is going to change a whole lot. What we have right now is what's going to happen. <clears throat> and if we want to discuss about what's going to happen next, fine. This board can say, what do we want to do next? That's, that's what we do. We try to improve the whole area. So instead of fighting about stuff or letting people think that we're, we're going to have that kind of meeting, I, we're not. I, I don't want that kind of meeting. We're all neighbors. We're going to work together. We're going to make the beach better. And it's up to the people that come that make the meeting. And trust me, I'm anxious to hear it too. Okay. And that's what we're going to do at the meeting on the 10th, is we're going to hear from the people. And then any decisions that we make, we will make at the end of, of May, at our May meeting. And we'll have that discussion then. Basically, we're there to listen to the people. We have really gone out of our way, I think, to try to make sure that we get as many people invited to this meeting as we possibly can. You've done a wonderful job. Well, everybody's done. Everybody, I know. Everybody, That's what I mean. You've instructed everyone. I did what you told me assignment. to do. And I'm so sure they did too. For, for the record then at that meeting, you know, we're going to listen to everybody and we'll listen hard. Yeah. And, and we'll take a lot of the comments that they have under advisement right. to continue to work on the next plan. Right. Or if this, like, like I say, if, if they show, uh, you know, A or B, and two thirds of the people in the audience say we don't want B because it's going to cause problems, I think we need to take that into consideration. I, I second that. I, as I understand it, the, this board makes that decision. That's right. I said I think we need to take that into consideration. Well, we can take it into consideration, when, but at our May meeting. Depending upon how many people are at that meeting and who's at that meeting, there's a lot of people maybe from different parts of the beach that are still in Florida. Mm -hmm. So you today, know, that's one of the big complaints. Well, that may be. So today, what we're going to listen to, or next in May, May 10th, we're going to listen to the people that that live here and they're here now. But a lot of the businesses and people that don't even really have a say because they're not even here yet. You know. So I say we go to that meeting and we listen to what the comments are, and if it's bigger percentage that says we got to keep going we'll say well we will we just don't have the money yet but we will commit to, to making it better I totally agree with what you just said and that's one of the major complaints that I have heard is that many people the woman today that told me she found this in her thing she, you know she said that the neighbors that live two on each side of her are not back from Florida yet otherwise they would be there and you know <clears throat> The decision was made some time ago to not have meetings in the summer because every, all of these guys here are busy during the summer. Well, you know what? Maybe that should change. Maybe we should be meeting in the summer when the people are here because Hampton has been accused of this for years on all sides, whether it was the state, the town, or whatever, that they swish things in in the wintertime and then don't listen to the people when all the people are here. Maybe we need to have a meeting during the summertime. But I think that this board has uh, made the decision not to meet during the summer because these people, are, the board members, are the ones that are busy. Didn't but that is when the people are here. Yeah. And we had to have certain things done by certain about certain times in, in the schedule. I don't think it was an option. Yeah. Well, no, we, I mean, we tried to host meetings at times that were agreeable because there, there were concerns about trying to have a meeting with the public to like right in the middle of the summer season because it would be impossible to find space and parking and all the rest of that stuff. So the people have been left out because the business people, which we are all business people, including myself, including Chuck, including you. I don't know how if your business is busy in the summer, but I think it is. Rick, um, Rick I'm going to jump in here. Okay, know, we've tried hard to make this work. Okay, okay but stop. It's Just stop. Just listen. Okay, she's. She and John have done Yeoman's job to put this thing together. We all have worked, okay? Those cards are out because she's running around. I've been I mean, talking to the papers. I've talked to the governor's office to get people to come to this thing. There isn't a, there isn't a right month or a wrong month. I mean, we could have this meeting July 24th, and there might not be as many people because people are busy at, at 
at activity. And I, I, I guess I, but I just say, take this finish. back is I, I am involved in this board. I've grown up in this town. So don't try to put me under the rug that I don't know what's going on. I, I mean, I think that was a bad comment. I'm sorry. Okay, no, and I don't mean it like that. I'm just saying that you have a business too. You have business. I have business. I, I, I don't want to meet in the summer either. But the people that are left behind are the people that live here and pay their taxes year round. They are left behind. There's a lot of people that aren't even going to be back May 10th. Okay. Going, Period. Forward, going forward, we will take into consideration of perhaps having one meeting. That's probably a good idea. When people are generally here. I thought maybe they would be here by May. To, uh, I thought maybe they'd be coming up here for Mother's Day. Yeah. So that's because William was very gracious when I asked him if instead of doing it in April, if we could do it in, in May. Well, I've uh, seen them ask to have meetings at the time, to be fair to William and the other people, including your group. They <coughs> wanted to meet during the summertime, but, you know, this board has made a decision not to meet in the summer. Well, and that it's was a new the, board. So it's a new time. board now, so maybe it needs to change. <laughs> okay. So, so oh, William. Yes. <laughs> so just to, 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 to recap, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to be meeting on the 10th. Right. We'll be prepared to bring backup equipment in the okay. event that the AV stuff isn't available at the, at the facility. As far as the presentation, uh, we've talked and I've heard again this evening uh, the need for to go over in detail the the timeline of the project, mm -hmm. uh, what the critical steps were, when we met, what we talked about, who we met with, what we talked about, when we made decisions, and to provide an overview of what the different concepts look like for different portions of the, of the study area, and then getting into the more detailed designs, which is what we talked about at the last meeting. And we, what I would like to happen is to have you do that whole presentation and then open it up for questions. Is Agreed. Yeah, okay I think I think that's probably the only way we'll get all the way through the presentation within the meeting. Okay. So if, when you do the um, background, will you do that sort of like in a, you know, just we'll go all the way back to the very beginning when you got the grant. We but sat I mean, down and talked. I guess I would like. I think maybe if you can just hit on the high points yeah, oh yeah. Of, of the timelines of of what happened, what 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 decisions were made, when you know how how often the public hearings. Were, held and decisions made after that so that people know the process that, that we've gone through now I'd be willing to do that but you can, if you can do it, that it's already done we just it's in okay. various iterations of presentations that we've done <coughs> over the we're coming up on five years of my involvement in this project at this point we've got all of that okay so. All right. and so then we will I will open it up for questions I guess I would like to ask the board um, what is the best way do you think that we can handle this? Do you think having like a couple of high school kids with walking microphones rather than asking people to get up and move around would be easier? I think you have to ask Channel 22 what works in that, that uh, location. Channel 22 is not doing it. Oh. Uh, the, the, the school, school is doing it. School is and then they're going to give it. Is there a podium there? In there? Um, <clears throat> I think people are more comfortable behind a podium. I, I, well, I don't want people to have to feel that they have to get up and walk in front of people and get out to do it. I'd rather have the microphone passed into them so that they don't even have to leave their seats. So, uh, you I guess Nancy, Nancy, you and I, would, let, let me get a hold of the superintendent and probably Keith, sorry, the building, yep. the building uh, facilities manager, and let's just map out a, 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 you know how this thing's going to look. Right. I mean. I, they have to have podiums, and if not, oh, they I mean, do. we yeah. can grab them. It's yeah. not too but I still think it's a smoother, smoother meeting if we have handheld mics. And well, you can hear it. You can hear Any it questions, better. you can even hear them a lot better in the crowd. And if there's, it's being taped, too, you hear it in the tape. Right. You know. Right. So if you want, I will yeah, contact well, the high school. Let's and both do it, yeah. So. Okay, keep going. <laughs> so I was going to actually, Pete, is there anything I'm missing here that you wanted to bring up as a point that we should consider? No, I think you, you covered it all. And I mean, we're going to touch on from the beach or the uh, bridge up to Boar's Head, from Boar's Head all the way up through Winnicunit, and we're going to touch on Ashworth as well. So that it's all going to be in there based on input that we've had over the past several years. So that's all the public meetings we've held 
all the Hampton Beach Area Commission meetings where we've discussed the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan Transportation Section. All the meetings we had with the town departments, uh -huh. I believe there were three or four of those. The meetings that we had with the individual state agencies to discuss their particular issues and to discuss the concepts with them right through until we get to May 10th. Okay. Uh, Have you done a run through on how long your presentation will be from start to finish before we go to the public? Is there a particular time limit you'd like us to shoot? Well, for? I, I think you, you can't go on too long. You yeah, know, we I mean, can't make this an hour or an hour and a half of you guys. It has to be something. It's uh, supposed much to be more. a two hour meeting, is what it says here on the card. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I think you need the bulk of the, the meeting uh, available to the public as opposed to, you know, Agreed. We don't like to listen to ourselves talk any more well, than you. Uh, you know, we've heard you. <laughs> so if if you uh, if we let you go without us interrupting you at all, right. uh, do you think you can do that in 40 minutes? Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. That's about as long as people want to tolerate listen to somebody else talk. Okay. Well, their their presentation actually would take care of some of the questions that people are going to have if they have enough time to go over everything properly. Right. So. Yeah, it's 40 minutes to cover everything, and then we can always backtrack because people are going to have questions about that slide 15 slides ago. Right. Can you and you'll be able to, to jump back to the slides? Yes. Yep. Question. OK. Anything else? That, oh, I know what I want. So when we finish this whole thing, we will have the language for the update of the master plan. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> Not just the language the entire section with graphics and everything. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, does I that go to Wooden Cunnet Road? I'm sorry? Does that go to Wooden Cunnet Road? Or it does. Street? It goes all the way to Wooden Cunnet Road. The plan, now this may be splitting hairs, but the plan can still go to High Street. It's the work that we're doing under our contract that goes to Wooden Cunnet Road. Because the master plan does go to High Street, but that's what was originally agreed to, to win a kind of road. I'd like to take a moment just to check, check in with the town planner. I mean, okay. since you're sitting here um, and you sit in a different seat, uh, even though you're not one of the commissioners, I guess I would like to give you the opportunity to see if you have any questions. Um, no questions, just that I think that the format for the upcoming presentation that's been discussed this evening sounds great. I think to have the 40-minute uh, introductory, introductory uh, PowerPoint presentation and then questions following that makes sense. I was thinking about the time limit as well being important because you did have a two-hour window to work with. Um, but I would, you know, just encourage everybody to come and attend. Um, I think it's very important. We've been noting it on our planning board agendas. It'll be on our next agenda for next Wednesday as well. So there'll, there'll be three in a row that have been noted. Um, so I just think it's very important that the public attend and uh, look forward to it. And I, I can't leave our assistant out with, uh, do you have anything you would like to offer? No, I think we've all been talking about it among everyone in town and it, it should be well attended. Um, and I would echo it, the favorable idea of having your presentation first and that should take care of a lot of the questions and then the public will have their time. Any other questions of the? No. no. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. I just have a question on the, um, at the school. Uh, is there going to be tables to roll plans out or are we going to put them up on a wall? Tell us what you want. I can do either because I'm going to come with plans that I can either roll out or I can tape up on the wall or which would you prefer it to do? I, I think it's more productive to have them on the wall because then people can you know, be two or three deep and be able to see it as opposed to standing up and looking down and only the folks around the table can actually see it. I agree. I agree with you. Pete, what I'll do is uh, I'm going to contact these, but I'll, I'll take the time to catch up with Keith and go where the room is and you know do a walkthrough note. And uh, I can give you, um, you know, I'll write out a how the room will be set up for everybody and so forth. So, why so not somebody from the school will set up the uh, chairs and everything else? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. As long as we are out by 9, the custodians will be more than happy to do whatever they need to do to help us. Great. Did you... <coughs> yes. 
you can always limit the comments if there's that many people. Well, what I would do, time what I would do is, I mean, if there are a tremendous amount of people and there's a group okay. from a certain area that has a certain issue, I would ask them to um, stand and identify one person to present. I think that's false. Thanks, sir. Um, It'd be interesting to see sure. how they use it. Um, a lot of people get excited and then yeah. they don't come. Um, that's been a problem. Thank you. <laughs> Just don't trip over the cord. for the community really kind of through, Don't trip over the cord. So this is paper copies okay. and electronic copies. Thank you. Good memory. Thank you. Thanks for coming back, um, guys. And yeah. for the com commissioners, um, this was asked for by our newspaper so that they will put it in the newspaper so people will be able to see it in the newspaper as well um, the, the, beforehand. The three plans that, that are in there is the, the intersection at the, the state park, yep. the intersection at Highland and where Ashworth and Ocean come together, and then at Church Street. So it doesn't include the entire corridor. Right knowing that you know well, they're not I going mean, to put I, an entire quarter plan. I mean, I think this, this is important because this is where the major changes right. would be taking place. And, and I will admit that what you're looking at there is our exercising some editorial judgment. So this is the one time that we've actually given you something specifically and didn't ask for input first. OK. All right. And that's the type of plan that we're going to prepare for the meeting and for the PowerPoint. Because on the PowerPoint, you remember, it was all the aerial background just with the line work and you could see all the existing conditions you know beyond the line work now we're going to prepare plans that are going to look like that instead so he just asked a general question because you know the, this, these are colored and so forth so all of the the green part that's all just that's it's like that, grass that's grass okay yeah. just so i'm just trying to think of the newspaper asked nancy yeah you know, what is that rocks or is that yeah. mulch <laughs> or you know i'm just yeah depends on the storm <laughs> <laughs> did you get a copy of uh, Miss Larson's letter? I nope. did not. Is there another one that we can give? I got one right here. Yeah. I think it would be good if he had that because I think uh, that she said she's a very good communicator. Thank you. Well, she's done a great job. Nancy, can you forward that just that drive to us? Sure. Okay, um, Treasurer's That's report. Um, okay, Commissioner yeah. Husband is not here. He, I got a couple extra um, copies of Vacation that. week, so. and he's off yeah, uh, with his, his wife. So we're off. Yeah. 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 So um, he tells me there's no change, but I see today that I have um, our bill from our, from our assistant for our last month's meeting, so I will have to get that to him somehow um, and get that paid. Let me get the town reimbursed. Have you received your check? Yes, you've, re you've received your check. Okay. Right. So we'll do that. Um, whole business. Uh, adoption of the minutes from last month. Do all of you have your minutes? And do I hear any motion? So moved. I'll second it. Okay. Um, questions. I have a couple of uh, corrections. Okay. Um, and a lot of it was. I I would like to congratulate Anne. I thought she did a phenomenal job being her first meeting with us and having such a detailed uh, report going on. Um, is she coming back for his water? He's in the restroom. Oh, okay. Um, so I would like to congratulate you. I think you did a great job. Um, and I know that um, uh, Christina was talking to you about the formatting and stuff. So she made some changes in the formatting when it went forward. I'll get together with her. And yeah, and just go over it. it. Um, I, what I did was I cop copied off what she had actually put on the uh, town website. And that's what you see in front of you here. And I just made some suggestions. Um, and I've given them all to Anne. And just for the public's information, I, it's basically just titles. Uh, you know, I, I am a uh, representative of the town of Hampton. And 
and uh, you are a commissioner at large mm -hmm. and vice chair. Um, the word love needed to be changed to live. <laughs> 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 and, um, uh, and, I, and I wanted to say that as long as we were out by 9 o'clock, to make sure that that was clear. And when I said I was going to walk the beach and, and, and do all of the single residents, it was Mr. Rage that said there are 2,000 people. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. Um, uh, and then I, I just. Mr. Ladson. I think I said. You said that? Yeah. You said that? Oh, I'm sorry. Then correct that to Mr. Ladson. Give him the credit. He's an eloquent speaker. Yes. Mm. Um, and that's basically about it. But I gave I gave her a copy of what I had. So if. if if it's all right with you, uh, are there any other uh, changes? No. no? Bob Lee? No. Um, yes, if you will accept it uh, as corrected with the suggested corrections, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I'm staying. Yeah, Bob was at the last yes. meeting. Right. Okay. All right. Um, the public hearing. Um, now I'm just checking on. A few things, Mr. Merrill. Well, we did you we've, take care of the insurance thing? The insurance is fine. Everything is a go. From the notes we took in the last half hour, uh, I'll finalize everything and get back to you. So okay, find out if they can do what they set and up and, and if they've got a couple of handheld. Yep. Okay. Yep. I also wanted to thank um, Town Manager Welch for um, announcing it at every selectman's meeting. Uh, he has announced that the public hearing is coming up. And uh, I was talking with uh, Superintendent Murphy the other day, and as long as I get her the short version of the information, she will put it on the electronic sign outside of the junior high school, uh, the academy. I'm not sure what it's called anymore. The academy. Yeah, the academy. <laughs> she will put that on the electronic sign so people will, will see it on that as well. So, um, okay, we talked about having the couple of high school kids now. I want to check on your responsibilities that I gave you last week, last month. Well, Mr. Preston, did you contact the businesses? I, do, I have, uh, I'm sending a mailing to Ocean Boulevard. There was stuff in those envelopes today. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Rage and Mr. Land, I know that you announced it at your, your, yeah, we your meeting. Yeah, we're having these printed, and we'll be putting, uh, Bob and I have split up. Um, condo associations. Well, there are a lot of condos. Right. So these are being made. <laughs> I didn't want to have them out too early because yeah. they get yeah. ignored if it's early. So Those, you did a very nice job, and thank you for putting the one downstairs here too. I appreciate that. Mr. McGrath, did, did you do the RPC? I did. Yes. And what about the planning board? Did you contact? Yeah, as Jason mentioned earlier, it's been announced at our last three meetings, I believe. The right? next one will be the third. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So the next will be the third. Yeah. Okay, and you took care of the uh, miss, um, town manager and mm -hmm. the department heads. They've all been notified. Yes. Okay. And that they've asked them to be there besides the ones that are relevant. Oh, good. Good. I would like to have one of those things too, if possible, only because a lot of people stop by constantly. Yeah. Want to we'll talk about they're being printed, business. so we'll make sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's your side of town. Mr. Merrill. And I went to the. <laughs> when they're done. Governor's yes. office? Um, I, I met um, Executive Councilor Prescott at uh, Brown's Lobster Pound opening and and uh, he took pictures of, of, of the hearing stuff and uh, sent it up to Concord and the, he said there'd be a representative from the state and, and he plans to be there too. Oh good. All right. good. So uh, he was very thankful that it, it, the timing worked great rather than me trying to figure out who I should contact him. So, yeah. so that's all been done. And then the other thing is, um, these things, these are, uh, I ran off 700 of them and we've given them to the chamber and they'll go in their next newsletter that's going out. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's all done. So. Great. And the media, did you talk to, to Max? I all? haven't talked to Max individually, but it's like. I, I see him. He, uh, so. What he's been printing in the paper the last couple of weeks, he, he knows what he's been getting the word out himself. Yeah. So. Um, and it's not just a little, you know, um, what am I trying to say? Press release. It's he's been talked about a great deal at the selectmen's meeting. Yeah. yeah. Max I just want to make sure I get those, those 
maps back because don't, don't they're going to max. So. <laughs> this is a separate one. Okay. Because right. I told him I would get him the hard copy as well as the electronic copy, so that. Um, and if he we doesn't need this, I will bring it back. We still have that have bottle back there. Mm -hmm. For the people um, coming into here. All right, Mr. Husband said he would place the notices um, in the um, kiosk, yeah. and then I checked right. on him the other day. And they, all of the kiosks have a, one of the notices as well as no the um, meters uh, room there. There's one in the window there. So he, he, he did get all of that out. Um, There's no way into that. Unfortunately, Mr. Watchman is uh, out of state right now, um, vacationing, I think, with his two children. Um, and I have not heard back from him at all. Hopefully he will be at the um, meeting I should have asked it would be great if you could come. Yeah. I've seen them on Facebook talking about doing some good things with those kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what I did was I sent uh, letters to um, our area representatives, our state senator, um, sent it to the uh, president of the Senate, the Speaker of the House. Uh, chairman of the Public Works Committee that controls the um, initial phase of the capital budget, knowing that we would want more. Uh, I sent it to the Trans Senate Transportation Committee chair and all of the members, because there's only five <laughs> in the Senate. So I sent out 16, I think it was, to different legislators. Um, I sent one to Gino. I also sent a um, copy out to two of the three because I couldn't get in any information on a, a mailing address, a telephone number, or an email for the highway safety in town, the highway safety committee in town. I wanted to make sure that they extend the invitation to them. And um, I sent it to uh, an email to the gal who does the school buses, because I wanted her to be able to see how those intersections were all going to happen. And then I did the residents. I did uh, White's Island. I did Boar's Head. I did the Harbor. Um, I did Church Street and uh, all of the side streets off of Church Street. I did High Street to Rick's business. Is this door to door? I did door to door. Are, are, are you are you running for anything? Yeah. How yeah. <laughs> many miles did you put on? I'm not. But I will tell you, wherever I saw a, a vehicle, uh, the shades were up. I knocked on the door. Um, not everybody came to the door. They were probably out walking the beach or doing other things. But I stopped at every place that I saw. There are a lot of contractors out. A lot of um, people having work done on, on their Picking up stones. Huh? Picking up stones. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the part of it is that people spend a fortune on their properties. Yeah. This woman here has spent a bundle, and she's been a frequent guest of the planning board, Mrs. Larson. Yeah. Was yeah. How, her house is gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think I, I feel good about what we've done of trying to get the tried, message we've out. Covered every, uh, and I think other people under every have, stone and, and have done that too. Part. Sorry, the they are planning to do a, an article in the newspaper for next Friday uh, with the maps and you know a notice of the public hearing. Uh, I was thinking that we should set up for like 60 people. I'll, um, I hope you're right. And hopefully we'll get 20. You know, I mean, because people get busy, and I realize that. But I would like to have enough seats Got it. set up. Yep. You know, um, and access to more if we need it. But okay. Okay. I think that covers everything for the public hearing. Anyone think see anything that I've missed? No, I just want to attest that I witnessed your personal efforts, and they went beyond the door. <laughs> I, I knocked on his door. <laughs> Did you answer? <laughs> <laughs> and he lives on a side street. <laughs> yeah, she did do the side streets. <laughs> it was fun. I enjoyed doing it. Okay, uh, status of the parks, low guard. Um, Mike did not give me <coughs> that information back, so uh, I think that's something that we're going to have to wait to 
the next meeting to figure out what we what it would actually look like because I need to hear back from Parks of what they would accept for a uh, logo. But that doesn't stop us from thinking about what we might do. How do you think we will get that message out? What is your suggestion for the strategy of getting out the message about the dog waste and the littering? Speaking of littering, mm -hmm. I did not leave a postcard if no one answered the door because I thought I don't want to be accused of littering this beach. So just yeah, did you know. Did you leave any in mailboxes? No, I did yeah, not. Because you're not allowed to. No, I did not. <laughs> I got caught doing that once and I got a letter. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all? That's worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get all that out. Was it stamped? No. <laughs> so does anyone have any, any suggestions about anything that, that you think we've missed? Or? I, I think signs without enforcement are not going to produce the desired result. It's like putting up a speeding sign but not having a cop ticketing. True. It, the only way I see it becoming truly effective is some kind of enforcement, be it by fine that was actually done or something more drafted. And it wouldn't have to be done very often before the word would be out. There have been signs on that beach forever. I will tell you that it, there is supposed to be, and Fran might know the answer to this, or Jason, is, uh, is there going to be an agreement to have a joint meeting with the planning board with the board of selectmen because the board of selectmen has agreed to, to to it and one of the big conversations that is going to be talked about is a core uh, a code enforcement officer and the board of selectmen wants to uh, come up with an idea and put it on the ballot this next year because uh, it's something that gets talked about and then all of a sudden it gets talked down um, but it sounds to me like there is a there uh, one the different we're told by the town lawyer that it's the planning board that is supposed to be the enforcer and then someone else says it's the building inspector but we're looking to come up with a description possibly of a new uh, position as a code enforcement officer and have it on the ballot this coming year so that these things will be answered once and for all. I know that the uh, town manager told me that um, occasionally they would, put, they would put the information up, you know, take care of your dog waste and do not litter on some of the electronic signs from time to time. Not all the time, but from time to time they, that they would do that. Um, do you the think town I is going to put some on their own, on the town's beaches and things like that. Right. There's a uh, there's some talk, excuse me, of putting them at the town forest. There has been many times when signs have been put up that have been taken down. We seem to have an increasing amount of people parking in um, uh, fire what do you call them? Fire, fire lanes. lanes. And it's not just the one that was talked about the other night. There are numerous ones and uh, that's one of the main reasons why they're talking about this code enforcement officer is a lot of people feel that their homes aren't safe because people, the fire trucks can't get down through these small roads and there are these huge trucks that get brought up at your meeting also. I heard, I heard that when yeah. I was out doing nothing. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, the town is making an effort to, to, to do some signs and uh, replace some of the signs that have been taken down that shouldn't have been taken down that are, you know, that have been there in the past. I mean, people, have, there's been a lot of things happening that shouldn't happen, and we're trying to make you know, better it's getting enforced. Signs don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. Well, some people of these either, are, they're either litter bugs or they're not litter bugs. Yeah. They're either, they either leave their dog waste or they don't leave their dog waste. I think talk, most I'm people talking about there. signs that say no parking here to the corner, stuff like that. Yeah, Those and, signs unless are being they, taken unless down. they enforce. Well, that's why there's going to be a code yeah, enforcement. So I think that's great if there is one, but if they just have signs there, people just ignore them. Do you think either the Chamber or the um, Chamber of Commerce or the uh, Village District uh, would put it on their, the website? People, I, I, we can do anything. We can put any signs anywhere, but it's just, they're either going to do it or they're not going to do it. Unless there's any enforcement, I think it's just wasting time making signs up that aren't enforced. I mean, it's just a waste of money. I mean, you can say don't litter, but if you're, if you're a litter bug, you're a litter bug. That's going to be it. Unless someone, unless someone hits you a $500 fine, they're going to keep doing it. I don't know. I, 
I hate to be negative, but it is. It's a fact, I think. I think it's a waste. Well, I think a lot of these businesses need to take more, uh, should be dealt with. Uh, they should be dealing with, they should probably be putting the signs up of their own accord, asking people to put the trash in the receptacles or something like that. Um, because it's pretty apparent where a lot of the junk that's on Ocean Boulevard in the main part of the beach is coming from. You can tell where it comes from. So, Rick, you can say that, but you, you'll go next to Blink's Fried Dough and they have their own barrels out there because the town's barrels aren't out there. People are going to throw them out or they're not going to throw them out. You're going to find a Blink's Cup down well, in front of the playground. Well, they get to the point where they're going to start doing something to these people that are littering. Maybe, maybe but just... if you take a business like that who's proactive, putting her own barrels out there, cleaning up her own barrels, not the town barrels, you can't punish her because some some Somebody guy put, throws his rubbish out. I mean, it's not their fault. What if you put that, that message on the barrel itself? Do not litter. I think there is one on the is state barrel or something yeah, like that. So. Keep our beach clean. Do, do not litter or something like that. So, okay. I mean, you can say that that Ocean Boulevard business, they have their napkins all over the place, or that one has their cups all over the place. If they're putting their barrels out and the town has their barrels out, how can you blame a business? You can't. It's the people, and the people have to be held accountable. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. I'm sorry. When Forrest, what Chuck is saying, there are litter and trash barrels at each opening to the beach. Mm -hmm. That there's this mountain of litter that never makes it from the beach to those trash barrels. It's the same issue. I really believe you find a few people, that word will spread very quickly, and the problem will be diminished. Short of that, the town code enforcement officer won't be working the beach because it's a state beach. They'll be working the side streets down off of Ashworth Avenue and things like that where there's a lot of complaints from the people that live there. There's a lot of complaints up at the north end. There's certain areas where there's a lot of complaints. I think it's great if we have an enforcement person. I think that's great. But the beach area and Ocean Boulevard will never be part of that code enforcement. So officer. you're going to um, put that on the ballot to allow you yes. we Well, we're hoping hockey, to. We it's going to be a, a matter of discussion. And we're that. going to find out how we can uh, enforce the uh, positions that are being made at the planning board or at with the building inspector. Uh, and things like uh, dog waste on town property. But it won't be the part that's on Ocean Boulevard. Because that's but if, the if state. they have, I, I heard you say that they were, you were going to put out some signs at the at the town beaches. If they did that at the like the park as well. What parks? Bicentennial Park. Please. Yeah, I mean th that's probably possible that that would be considered. Yeah. No, and if they're the, doing some beautiful work there, by the way, right today I went by there. I don't. Oh, know. Linda and John. No, no, I don't know. It's big, um, uh, big equipment and stuff. They're on the sand. On the. Yeah, on, I saw that. Who, yeah, who would be I don't know that? who that is. That must be town. Must be. Funny. Yeah, it's got to be something. It was something major. Well, really. when I came by, when I was walking the other day, and I stopped to check to, uh, at the uh, kiosk, I was talking with Meredith, and I said, "What is what's happening out there on the beach?" And she said, "They're just taking all of the sand that blew up, and redistributing." Yeah. That's what I try to explain yeah. to people when people have complained. It, the, the, town, the state, and it's the same way every year, you know, Jan, April 1st is still pretty early when all of a sudden at April 15th there's another big storm like we've had, even the one that was yesterday with it raised some havoc yeah. um, with pushing mud all over the place. Um, and so the state, they try to wait do a little, usually they do a little as they go along, and then this is the time when they finish it off. Uh, there are quite a few, there's been quite a few complaints about the beach, though. Um, people have sent pictures to the town, and you know, we always do the same thing. It's not the town, you know, that can help you out here. And uh, it, there are redis, people, people like some of the ones that live in these condominiums that are like we're. Bob lives or to the north there. They haven't lived here a long time, so they don't they haven't seen how it works. It's it's a process. It goes on for several weeks of pushing that sand around. A lot of people are complaining um, at uh, from like right in front of Little Jacks all the way down to Winnipeg Road. I, I haven't even been down there to look onto the beach. 
but from what I'm hearing, it's nothing but stone. All the sand is gone. Oh, really? And um, that's what people keep saying, but they do exaggerate. No, they're but, moving a lot yeah. up there. They have, they've actually taken the dump trucks and moving it up to the, the little jetty, and now they're going past that. Yeah. And, you know, now they're going to have um, the funding that's coming to do the repositioning of the harbor. And I keep telling people, I assume that that sand they're going to take out of there is going to the beaches. They usually right? split it with yeah. Hampton and Sebo. Yeah. They usually give half and half. So, uh, you know, that's <clears throat> hope for the future to make more sand. And the sand just keeps disappearing. A lot of, you know, who knows where it goes. It, it's, some, the, it's the ocean. Yeah. You've got no control. Yeah, you have no control. I, I try to explain that to people. Every year it could be different. You just never know what's going to happen. Okay, new business. Any ideas for new business? Yeah, we're going to have to do a lot of listening at that meeting yeah. about what we're going to do next because they're going to give us a lot of good ideas on new business. Well, my hope is that really the commissioners have seen where, where we are at the, po at the moment anyway and we'll let the public speak and you know we'll listen to what they have to say and we'll be taking copious notes i'm sure <laughs> uh, charges double no, no. Huh? <laughs> we'll the give word. you the summer <laughs> um, but then we will meet um the fourth thursday in may and 20 i think it's the 24th 24th 24th, 24th. Uh, the 24th of May, and we will take into consideration everything that we've heard and um, try to get that finalized because I'd like to, I'd like to, if we can, wrap this, our, our part of it up by the June meeting, uh, if that's at all possible, because they will be, that gives them time to get all of the information back to us for the uh, update of the master plan. Sounds good. And then come the fall, um, we'll start on the other part of the master plan, which is the environment. And, um, that will talk about the flooding and the, all of that. Oh, there's, there's going to be, there's lots of things to talk about. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I just had to find out how we update the master plan for the, for that part of it. If there's nothing else, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Two are on it all, all the time. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, all. Thank you, Channel 22. Yeah. How new are these? Looking.